This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with the Mark Weber. Dub them easy. And this is now back to two weeks in a row I can say that, because I want to say, what, it was the week before that or two? You know what, this is three. It was the week before, two weeks before you were off been a while. the draft. But I have you back, and we're kind of doing fantasy football rankings. If you guys didn't watch last week, we're continuing through our fantasy football rankings that'll take us into our team previews for all the divisions then we'll have our playoff predictions, and then the season will be here. Before we know it, Mark, we got a jam-packed running back kind of podcast for you. I was going to say topic, but really it's a podcast here, all three topics. A little housekeeping here before we start. Number one, if you like what you're what we're doing, make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valid podcast. You want to be like our great patrons like Jake, Christian, Matt, Patrick, just to name a few who have come on segments in the past. You can go ahead and get on our $10 tier. That'll get you on a podcast each and every month. Number two, make sure to check out the MVP store in the description so you can get yourself. Neither one of us are wearing it, but we have the MVP t-shirt that you can buy from the store. Mostvalopodcast.com. That also has the store as well, as well as everything that we have for MVP. And last but not least, if you're on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, go ahead and give the Onside Kick a five-star rating. But like Marcus said, and I'm adding it to it, don't just give us the five-star rating. Type in a little something. Tell people what you like, why they should listen. We'd really appreciate it. Do it also for everyone here at MVP. But, Mark, we're doing running backs. And before we start the discussion, let's go through our, first off, honorable mention. So yeah. before we get through how we do this is we start from 30, go all the way to the top. So before we get to what this would be 21 through 30, we have a few honorable mentions, and those are going to be Ronald Jones the second, C.J. Anderson, and Royce Freeman. Got votes from both of us, but did not make it into the rankings. But without further ado, here is 21 through 30. At number 30, we've got Tennessee Titan Deion Lewis. Then at number 29, Tariq Cohen of the Chicago Bears. Then at number 28, Jamal Williams. Right above him, 27, Alex Collins of the Ravens. Then Lamar Miller at 26. Sony Michelle, the rookie, at 25. Marshawn Lynch at 24. Carlos Hyde at 23. Then we've got Derrick Henry at 22. And then Darius Geis, who we talked about two weeks ago, he is at number 21. And the guy I want to start with, and the reason why I want to start with him is I had him as high as 12 on my fantasy rankings. You did not have him anywhere in your top 30. Correct. What are your thoughts on Carlos Hyde coming into this year? I actually like Carlos Hyde. My problem is this. Okay. I don't trust Cleveland. Okay. It is that simple to me. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is the thing that we need to put out there. These are not us saying who's the best running back in football. You know, we're not doing that right now. This is basically who our combined. Who would we draft? Who would we draft? Yeah. And for me, I have a very strict rule in fantasy football. I don't Mm -hmm. have that many strict rules, but I have one. (laughs) It is you do not draft anybody from Cleveland. Okay. I do not touch Cleveland players because I do not trust them as an organization. I don't trust the coaching, especially not with the Wolverine, Hugh Mm -hmm. uh, Hugh Jackson out there. Uh, I just don't. I don't want anything to do with it now, especially with a. I and I actually do like their wide receiving weapons they have. I think they but, have a pretty but with a rookie above quarterback average defense. Could have a rookie quarterback. Yeah, they might have this rookie quarterback, which I actually think would help. Mm-hmm. Um, but the problem is, so far Tyrod Taylor is supposed to be the starter, and I like Tyrod Taylor, but I'm not crazy about it. I don't mm-hmm. think other teams are really going to respect Tyrod Taylor that much to where Carlos Hyde will be able to do what he can do. I'm not saying that you should not draft Carlos Hyde. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I would not draft anybody from Cleveland. Here's the thing. To me, if there's anybody, like, obviously there's a few people from Cleveland where it's like, obviously their defense right now, while they're in this rebuild, I ain't drafting them because they're going to be giving up some points while this defense grows. 
I'm probably not going to draft Baker Mayfield this year because you know what? I'll get my starter early. The on. Only exception, of course, is for all those everybody who's a in free dynasty. Agency well, pickup. I was going to say everybody in dynasty okay. leagues. Then you can keep obviously them. Yeah. stash a guy like that. But sure, I the way I think is we don't do a dynasty league, so yeah. I don't think dynasty wise. But I mean, this year could be interesting. Like, I mean, Josh Gordon, I think is like Josh Gordon and Jarvis Landry are going to be, obviously, we're going to talk about maybe one or both of them next week because yeah. Jarvis Landry getting traded over. I don't think Jarvis Landry is a guy that, ah, he's on Cleveland, don't now, draft him at all. Yeah, I mean, all. there will probably be exceptions to this rule mm-hmm. next week. Um, but I think people are going to be mad at me for having them lower than they would expect. There are two things that I kind of think about with Carlos Hyde, though. And right now I think Carlos Hyde is a guy I would draft because, one— I think he's going to be the main bell cow in Cleveland because, you know, Isaiah Crowell, for years, I've been saying, get rid of the guy. He's not good for Cleveland. They finally listen to me. They bring in Carlos Hyde. The question, though, for Carlos Hyde, and this is my only little caveat with me is having it injury? him. injury? No. Because that's with, my question. With me having him at 12 is, what is Nick Chubb's role yeah. going to be on this team? Well, and how many carries and yards could he take away from That's Carlos? the thing that I can see, you know. Uh, Carlos Hyde, I, without a doubt, is default number one. Mm-hmm. But I think Nick Chubb will take more and more away. I really, really like Nick Chubb. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why you know teams kind of didn't have him as running back number two or running back number three necessarily uh, in the draft. You know, I really like Nick Chubb. I think that he will probably start to take some of this away, especially if there's a potential injury for Carlos Hyde. Then, without a doubt, Nick Chubb's going to step up, and then I don't think. You know he's not the guy who's going to let up. If he mm-hmm. starts to get the majority, he's going to make sure everybody well, knows he's the starter. And also the thing that this is kind of the flip side to me and kind of my rationale with it is Carlos Hyde had 940 yards in San Fran. Yes, it's going to be different in Cleveland where Isaiah Crowell had about 850, I believe. The thing that I think will help uh, Hyde in the fantasy department that didn't help Crowell is he had eight touchdowns compared to two for um, Isaiah Crowell. So, I mean, with him getting into the end zone a little bit and if he can be a receiver out of the backfield, what, is he going to get in the end zone? Him. Because I'm not going to put Carlos I think Hyde in there. I think there. he'll get into the end zone if more I'm than two the, times. If I'm in the red zone, I'm not putting Carlos Hyde in there. I'm putting Nick Chubb in there. Oh, I'm not saying just red zone, but I'm saying I think that he'll get more than just two touchdowns the entire year. I wouldn't I guess don't know, he'll have more than four. I don't know if he'll have eight like he did last year, but I think he'll mm-hmm. have more than two. I think that... Here's the thing. Maybe like th- if you four, like one five? of these guys, I like Nick Chubb because mm-hmm. he's going to vulture those touchdowns. I mean, you could that could be a good. Don't, here's the question I ask you: mm-hmm. If you draft Carlos Hyde, do you have to handicap Nick Chubb to him? Is he a handicap pick? Kind of like back I think in it'd the be a day, good idea. Oh, back in the day, it was in Baltimore. It was Bernard Pierce was Ray Rice's vulture. Yeah, where he would always come in goal line situations, vulture. And that. there's nothing worse than you having, in this case, Carlos Hyde, and then mm-hmm. your opponent has Nick Chubb who gets mm-hmm. the touchdown. You know. Well, and that's why here I want to ask you about this guy because you had him a lot higher than I sure. did. I had him last at number thirty. Okay. You had him as high as number twenty. Sony Michelle, what do you think? Yeah. Of? Well, my thought is that Bill Belichick wouldn't have drafted a running back in, in the, the first, first round, round if he didn't wasn't intending to use him. Mm-hmm. And I totally get it. I 100% understand anyone's reservation for a Patriots running back because what does Bill Belichick do? He says, I've got four running backs. I'm using four running backs. Dude, they've got a ton. They've got Rex Burkhead. Mm-hmm. They've got James White still. They've got Mike Gillisey that they've used. They've got Brandon Bolden that they've used. And they added Jeremy Hill. Yes, yeah, some of these guys, like there might be Patriot fans. Yeah. Sean might People be out gonna there. People are going to get cut, obviously. Well, and he's probably screaming, don't worry about Bolden. Maybe don't worry about Gillisley. But just Burkhead, White, Hill, where's where's Sony going to get touches? And that's the thing with mm-hmm. me where it the reason why I'm almost on the side of I will not worry about a Patriot running back is week one. Listening to the Dan Patrick show and Ross Tucker, I usually love the guy. I love when he's filling in for Dan, but he said that day, you know what? In like he's like, I don't have any inside information, but I feel like Rex Burkhead, like that's the way they're going. And I went shifty move, picked up Rex Burkhead, started him, completely lost week one. Yeah, because of that 
move. So after that day, I said, screw it. I'm never going to never gonna pick up a Patriot running back because you never know who's going to get the touches. Which is completely fair. But the only exception in, in my eyes is the fact that you invested a first-round pick into this guy. You better use him. But will it be this year or next year where that pays off? I have to think that with an old quarterback, and mm-hmm. you got to be in, in a win-now mode, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you just lost in the Super Bowl. That stinks. Oh, I'm not saying win-now for the Patriots. I'm just saying... For fantasy, like, is he going to be behind these guys? And then next year's the no, year. No, I don't he... think so. You, I, I don't think that they would have invested that in him. Like I said, they are a win now team. They want to win mm-hmm. now, so they're going to use a first round pick on a guy who plays now. Because out of the touches, when you look at it, Deion Lewis had 180. He's no longer there. He's mm-hmm. in Tennessee. Mike Gillisley is now the guy who comes in with the most touches. He had 104. Burkhead only had 64. And then James White had 43. However, out of the backfield, James White was the guy getting most of the targets. He had 72 targets out of the backfield compared to 36 for Burkhead, 36 for Lewis. Gillisley only had one target out of the backfield all year. So to me, yeah, they lose Deion Lewis. So, okay, put in either Jeremy Hill or Sony Michelle. I think it's too crowded. And that's why I put him at 30 because... He's got the play potential to be a top 30 running back. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if there'll be enough. It's kind of like when you've got too many mouths to feed. Sure. That's exactly what this I'm is. I'm just trusting the fact that you don't invest that if you don't plan on using it. All right. All right. Who's one that you want to touch on that I'll, I'll let you pick yep. one? Uh, well, someone I want to put out there is Dion Lewis. All right. uh, I left him out. I did not have any any intention of, of putting him mm-hmm. in my top 30 purely for injury. Okay. Um, and also, like I know he, you know, he was nothing at the beginning of the season last year. Started getting more and more touches. I think he had like fifty some touches mm-hmm. uh, by the end or something like that. You know, nothing crazy, nothing substantial. Uh, and the thing for for Deion Lewis to me is Derrick Henry's already there, so he's competing that way. Mm-hmm. And the Tennessee Titans are a team that are going to run. But my question is just. Is Deion Lewis going to be healthy enough to where you want to you want to draft him? See, I think so, and I mean this is this is something that more NFL teams are going towards. Is we don't have an NFL where it's like, well, you're our running back, go ahead and do it. Like, not mm. many teams have that. Like, maybe the Rams or something. I think about, but like when you think about some of the better teams, the Saints who were in the playoffs, two headed monster. Yeah, the Vikings. Two-headed monster last year. Like, that's the way, even look at your Bears, two-headed monster with Mm -hmm. Howard and Tariq Cohen. So that's kind of where the league is going. Hell, look at a team like New England that we just mentioned where they have a four-headed monster, sometimes even three-headed monster. I The question that I think, though, is, and of course this is if he stays healthy, Derrick Henry to me doesn't scream. Like, 744 yards last year, five touchdowns. Out of the backfield, he only had 17 targets out of the backfield, so yeah. he's not a big receiving option. My whole big thing is, yeah, Derrick Henry might right now be number one on that depth chart, but what is it that maybe midseason, maybe week three, they flip and Deion Lewis takes those carries well, that, away from It's honestly Henry. something I kind of wonder about myself is, which one of these guys truly will be running back one? Mm-hmm. Or is it going to be, honestly, a pure kind of split? Um, Because we've got these guys, two of them, and they're in the same range, 21 and 30. And I'm assuming that Derrick Henry is going to be your number one, Mm -hmm. but things can change, obviously. Uh, I think they will. I think Deion Lewis is going to take that starting job from him. If he's healthy, we'll see what happens. Well, yeah, that's the big thing. That's a big question. Another person I want to put uh, mention, because Mm -hmm. you mentioned him, is Tariq Cohen. Okay. And I'm gonna. I'm a Chicago Bears fan. I'm drinking out of a Chicago Bears little tumbler over da, here. Bears. Uh, but with that being said, I need to put a little bit of a warning. I feel like Tariq Cohen is gonna be a guy who has sky high expectations, and I honestly think that we're probably a little low on mm-hmm. Tariq Cohen. Me especially. I had him higher than you. You did. I just had the reservation that I don't. I want to believe that Matt Nagy is gonna do amazing things mm-hmm. with him. Uh. And he shows explosion, uh, great explosion. He mm-hmm. shows great potential. But I'm just a little bit scared that there's bust potential and people Let, could draft him you know too what? high. I'm glad you brought this up because when our whole rankings played into it, I'm going to spoil something right here, but mm-hmm. 
I don't think this is a big spoiler because I don't expect anyone to think that Jordan Howard was in the top 10, but Jordan Howard will be in our next segment that we do with our rankings 11 through 20. I honestly had him in this part. I had him at 21, Mm -hmm. Tariq Cohen at 27. And what I think for the Bears is we already had a little, I'll say, scare this offseason, Bears fans, where, oh, my God, Jordan Howard deleted everything off Instagram. Is he going to get traded? Ooh, are the Bears going to think about moving him? Does he doesn't fit? And they didn't. Matt Nagy's, yeah, they didn't. But I'm not saying they do that. Yeah. What I'm saying is by the end of the year, by the end of the regular season, mm-hmm. what will be established is that Jordan Howard will have an okay year. He'll be right around a top 20, if not a top 20 fantasy option. But I think the perspective will have flipped to where with Nagy in Chicago, people will look at Cohen and be like, he is he's the back of the future for the Chicago Bears. He's the one that fits Nagy's system better because mm-hmm. the way I'm looking at it, if Nagy wants to do similar things that he did with Kareem Hunt last year, Tariq Cohen's your guy. Tariq Jordan Cohen Howard is, is not, not a Jordan uh, is not a Kareem Hunt. Oh, I'm just saying with the receiving out of the backfield, yeah. using him as a double threat. I think that he's more of a Randall Cobb than a Kareem Hunt. I'm not saying he's going to be top ten fantasy mm-hmm. option. I'm just saying that I think he's going to be able to do more of what Matt Nagy yeah. wants compared to Jordan Howard. No, I, I think that any any coach worth their while is going to mold the system around what they've mm-hmm. got. Um, that's why I still think Jordan Howard will do a great job. But I just think that Tariq Cohen, for me, I just think that the cost is going to be too high because mm-hmm. I, I'm telling you, Matthew Barry, you know, choose your uh, your favorite They're ranker. All high on Tariq. They're Cohen. going to love Tariq Cohen, and I'm going to like him as a Bears fan. But I think that people are going to mm-hmm. be super high on Tariq Cohen, and I think that it's going to be driving his price up very high uh, come draft day for for all of you in at home. Um, and well, then that's going to be a here, little too high for you. Here's the thing I'll ask you, because Jordan Howard only had 32 res- uh, targets out of the backfield compared yeah. to Tariq Cohen, 71. And I'm not trying to say that Jordan Howard's going to get more targets out of the backfield. My true question is, and this plays into fantasy because it's all touches, Yeah, Jordan Howard with John Fox had 276. Tariq Cohen had 87. If you were to guess... Mm-hmm. What the touches are like with Matt Nagy, how would you split them up between Howard and Cohen? I think or what do you think it'll be at the end of the year? I think that honestly, it's got to be for these two like a 60 40 split, okay, between them. And I mean, obviously, there's going to be other mm-hmm. third, you know, running backs and stuff I'm in the conversation. Pull out my calculator to see what um, the math is on that, but I would call it like a 60 40 split. But the problem with that is going to be too, I mean, obviously, if we're talking PPR league, draft. Cohen really really high because he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be getting a lot of passes. It was about a sixty nine thirty one split last year. Okay, if we go by the numbers, so so not terribly far off to where I'm going. Uh, only about a Just ten a per, ten f- point difference. There. A few more carries for Tariq Cohen, and that's the thing why mm-hmm. I feel like with Matt Nagy, first off, he like Kareem Hunt is obviously a better back yeah. than Tariq Cohen, but I think the speed that Cohen has. Is gonna fit what Nagy wants and to do. You're more. also gonna get some of those arguable like extended handoff, mm-hmm. like you know lateral passes and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, Tree Cohen will also probably be used in the run pass option a little bit more mm-hmm. than Jordan Howard will. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. My only fear, of course, with Tariq is just that people are gonna go too high. Like I said, mm-hmm. um, the only other thing is you know I with Darius Geis. I like Darius Geis a lot. I think he's going to be the main guy. My potential, in Washington. The, yeah. My thought is just: is it going like when's he going to get there? Is there going to be a potential? It's going to take him a while to where yes, he's going to be amazing in the middle of the season. And on I am on. But the, will he get there at the beginning? I am on the bandwagon that he wins the job in the off season. I sure I, hope so. I, I like think him. he's going to win the job in the off season. Also, for Redskin fans out there, I get it. I made a mistake in the last side. The last time we talked about guys. Keep getting comments. Oh, we didn't trade up for yeah. him. We traded down. Made a mistake there. I said you traded up when you traded down and still got guys. But I'm on, and the reason why I had him at 18 was I am on the belief that he's going to win the job this offseason. Because, I mean, yeah, Washington has running backs, but I don't think they have any running back that it's kind of like a lesser, like I'm still going to say mm-hmm. this, 
a lesser version of Leonard Fournette to where it's not like he's instantly coming in, I am the starter, but yeah. people are going to see what he can do and be like, holy crap, we got a little Leonard Fournette I just, here. I just wonder if they're going to take a very pure committee approach. Mm-hmm. You know, that's they my fear. Could. It's not necessarily that he's going to be third running back mm-hmm. on the depth chart. It's just, to me, an, uh, a fear of, are they going to say, nope, everybody gets, you know, mm-hmm. 30%, you know, and they, well, they keep even it Even if it's like Christian McCaffrey last year, I know we're going to get to him later, but mm-hmm. he's an example of that. High expectations out of a rookie coming out had to split with Jonathan Stewart, and it yep. kind of hurt his fantasy numbers, even though he had a pretty good year. Here's the last person I want to mention for this, and that is Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch with the Raiders. Yeah. Does John, the same question we asked kind of for Derek Carr, yeah. is John Gruden coming in and his offensive scheme change Marshawn Lynch and change his fantasy outlook? Well, if anything, I mean, here's the thing with, with when it comes to John Gruden. John Gruden being known for like a quarterback guy, he's never really had like the best quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if having Derek Carr, a guy who's got a lot of skill, a lot of talent, mm-hmm. is going to make him really focus on we're going to pass all day. I mean, they went out and added Martavius Bryant and Jordy Nelson to kind of help that pass yeah. attack. I think he's going to get excited, especially mm-hmm. being known for being this quarterback guy. I think he's going to want to utilize those weapons that he's got. Mm-hmm. So that makes me fear for Marshawn Lynch. Also, Marshawn Lynch, since he came back from retirement, hasn't, hasn't been, been old. Stellar. Yeah, he hasn't been the old Marshawn Lynch. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I I would be nervous about taking him. I would not hesitate to draft him if he's there and the value is right. Uh, but I, I, I'm just a little bit nervous about it. I mean, we both had Marshawn Lynch at pretty much the same spot. Yeah, I mean, he didn't... So, last year, he didn't do terrible. Like, 891 yards on the season, just over 200 attempts, seven touchdowns. Here's my one bugaboo with Marshawn Lynch this year. And for me, he would probably be my fourth fourth running back. Like, okay, I've already mm-hmm. got three backs. Okay, Marshawn Lynch. It's a guy Lynch. you're putting on the bench. It's a no, well, it's a guy that came in this year. No, I'm saying it's a for you fantasy oh, yeah. football, you're putting yeah. him on your bench. I'm putting him on the bench. He's matching up with a bye week I really like. And the reason why he's fitting that this year, the muscle hamster comes in. Yeah, yeah. the muscle hamster was not anywhere in our top 30, but how is Doug Martin going to do taking carries away from Marshawn Lynch? Because, yeah, you only had DeAndre Washington and uh, Jalen Richard had about 56, 57 attempts behind Lynch, but new coach, I'm assuming that Doug Martin is going to take a few carries away from Marshawn Lynch and maybe be used more as a passing option than Marshawn Lynch was. Yeah, and and just there's still just this question of what type of offense mm-hmm. is John Gruden going to bring to the Raiders now? I mean, you can look at what he did in Tampa Bay or in Oakland. Sure, you can look at that, but a lot of time has passed. The NFL has changed. If you try and just bring in what you did in you know the 2000s, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to translate as well now. There has to be some change. There has to be some updates to that. So there's a big question mark of what he's done because he's been analyzing a lot of plays. He's been watching a lot of tape. He's been watching a lot of really good coaches on uh, you know while announcing games. So I'm sure he's learned a lot. I'm sure he's picked a lot of that and decided to piece some of it together to bring something new. Well, and the one thing that I will kind of – the last thing I will leave before we go on to the next one is – just to kind of get a little bit of an answer of what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. So their offensive coordinator this year is going to be Greg Olson. No, not the Greg Olson that plays for I the wish. Carolina Panthers. But Greg Olson, here has been his last three positions in the NFL. So last year, he was only there for a year. He was the quarterback's coach of the Los Angeles Rams. Got to work with Jared Goff. Sean McVay might have had a little bit more to do with that offense, but got to work with mm-hmm. Jared Goff. Then the next, the f- job before that, 2015 to 2016, he was an offensive coordinator for the Jaguars, got to work with Blake Bortles for two years. Not that And exciting. then he was with the Oakland Raiders as an OC in 2013 and 2014, the year before Derek Carr and Derek Carr's rookie year. So mm-hmm. maybe... That's a little bit of why he got the job, where he's a little bit familiar with Derek Carr, being able to work with him his rookie year. 
Plus, but John Gruden thought that he was Greg Olson, the tight end. Yeah, he was maybe. really excited. And I mean, of course, when you're mm-hmm. working with the Los Angeles Rams, that's a really big job, especially yeah. last year with what Nick Vay and that coaching staff was able to do. If there's any running backs we did talk about, you want to chime in about, let us know down below. If we didn't talk about any from this, what, it's 21, it's screwing me because we're only doing 30 right now for these. Yeah. 21 through 30, there was anyone we didn't mention in this group, let us know down below in the comment section. 